And uh, today, with my colleague Stefan Seitz here, we'll be talking about, we'll attempt to dispel the myth that bringing up an NMOS media processing node that does SIMP 210 is difficult. We're going to do it here in 20 minutes. And uh, I'd like to credit Stefan and Gareth, who did put a lot of effort into the presentation today. So the building block. So we're going to start by using GStreamer for our media processing node that we're going to create. GStreamer is an open uh, source pipeline based media framework. You may be familiar with it. It uh, based on the concept of el elements and a pipeline sources. These are video sources, audio sources, media sources, filters, process the, the data, and then syncs to, to, to take the results, right? And various properties. And then you have pads to connect sources to sinks, and you have queues to, for, or buffers to uh, pass the data between, between the elements. So GStreamer can be extended. It's a great media framework, and it can be extended by using plugins. So what we've done in the DeepStream SDK that, that's also based on GStreamer, it extends GStreamer, and it's free to download is uh, we've extended it by adding uh, GPU accelerated uh, filter elements for video or audio processing, uh, efficient buffer passing we, we, between these elements. Some of the elements might be CPU elements, some might be running on the GPU, and you want to be able to efficiently pass the data between them. Uh, we've integrated it with uh, some of the and free to download NVIDIA AI SDK toolkits uh, that are available for doing AI processing within the media nodes. Uh, we've integrated support for SIMP2110, SIMP source and sync elements, and uh, added a NMOS support library. And this DStreamer SDK can be downloaded from um, for free from the, the NVIDIA NGC uh, software download portal. So using a combination of GStreamer and DeepStream, you could set up uh, video pi pipeline looks something like this, where you have uh, you have capture from a camera, for example. It, then you do some uh, decoding on the GPU. Then you do some image processing again using typically a GPU, and then you take the decoding and maybe you do some AI like object detection, classification, and then you take those objects and you track them. And then you might maybe you're displaying this on screen for telestration or something like that, or maybe or maybe just writing through this for output for some other use case. So this this is how you would take deep the combination of DeepStream and GStreamer and create a media processing application or or node in this case. So like I said, uh, to do SD twenty one ten, we need SD twenty one ten integration into into GStreamer. So we did that using. Uh, the RiverMex SDK that from NVIDIA that uh, implements uh, transmit and receive of, of SIMP2110 on, on COTS hardware. Um, it supports hardware-based data transfers between the GPU and, and the NIC or the, and the net network interface to support uh, low latency transfers. Uh, it offloads the packet handling, so your application doesn't need to do that. You hand the data payloads and buffers to, to, to the to RiverMax, or in this case, the plugin to uh, GStreamer, and the, the packet packetization is all taken care of for you, as well as the packet pacing. And it's cross-platform, bare metal, uh, in a container or in a, in a uh, VM. And so what's exported in DeepStream is N NVDS UDP plugins to provide this uh, transmit and receive. And if you're familiar with GStreamer, with the UDP and UDP sync source in the RTP pay, and uh, the, it's very similar to those, but it's highly optimized to do uh, 2110. So to get started with our media processing node this afternoon, we're going to create a little Hello World application. It's just going to send out some color bars on SIMP2110. So we start with the plan. We want some color bars generated on the CPU in this case, and we have a network interface card connected to our, in this case, it's a SIMP2110 monitor, but it could be 
broadcast switcher or anything downstream in your facility. Uh, we're going to take the video test source GStreamer element that exists in GStreamer today. And we're going to use the MVD, MVD SDT sync, which is going to be our sync that's going to take the video frames and make uh, SIMSI 2110-20 compliant uh, video stream for us. So what do we have to do in the middle? Let's see, we have to, we add a queue from GStreamer with a sync and a source. This could actually be op optional, but we're going to do this uh, for buffering. Um, the queue has a sync to take the source frames, and then of course a source could pass out here. Uh, so here, here we're going to do SIMC 20, 100% color bars. We're going to specify that it's going to be raw video. It's going to be HD, or you, and uh, it's going to be typical 10-bit uh, YCDCR in 60 frames per second. And on the for our NV SDP sync, we of course need to specify the internet IP address, the multicast address for SIMC 2110, and the port. And these are things that would, you would, might get from an FTP file, but in this case, we're going to do the low code approach, and we're just going to specify all this on the command line with a with a command called sys. So we here we learn a lot. GStreamer. Here's our video test source element from GStreamer. Here's the parameters. Put in a queue. Here's our plugin NV SDT sync from GStreamer, and here's the interface and the the multicast address and the port. And, and voila, we have, a, we have our first multimedia processing node. And we can check, if we look on the fabric that takes the SIMC 2110 input, we can see that it's compliant. So the first step of creating this media processing node is done. We have our SIMC 2110 uh, working. So now the next step is to add NMOS, of course, which is very important. And thanks to Rob and the guy from Sony for giving a great introduction to NMOS and overview of the current state. We'll take it from there and show you how to add NMOS into this simple media processing node. And Stefan will take it from here. Hello, thank you. Um, my name is Stefan Seitz. Um, I'm from NVIDIA Developer Technology. We are a small team uh, in Germany um, helping partners adopt video and AI technologies by NVIDIA. Um, as uh, Tom said, we um, will now add NMOS to our um, application. And for that, um, DeepStream actually includes a reference application that is fully open source that shows you how, um, how to use our wrapper library around NMOS CPP to configure NMOS uh, node with senders. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Senders and receivers based on uh, SDP descriptions and also on how you would handle the NMOS activation callbacks in this application. I must say, this is a full-scale application that also uh, sets up a GStreamer pipeline that does um, AI processing on video and visualizes the result. And the result is then sent out via SIMT2110. Um, as I said, it's a full-scale application. It will first set up a GStreamer pipeline as we saw before on command line. Uh, but this uh, application will do it uh, in a C++ uh, um, example file. And we are using NVDS NMOS to set up the NMOS node. And we are registering our callback to, uh, to set up a sender. And the NMOS activation callback, we will handle them to reconfigure our pipeline and to um, yeah, activate our UDP sync to send out uh, SMT110 to the multicast address we are supposed to send to. So this is a nice application. You can adapt it to your needs. It's uh, yeah, open source, but probably um, we want to stay on the command line because we want to do it in 20 minutes. So we thought um, maybe we could wrap up the logic that is done right now in the application and wrap it up as a GStream plugin because then we could uh, set up our NMOS nodes directly from the command line via GST launch, which is like a command line launcher of GStreamer. So we are now for ready for our Hello World 2.0. Let's set up the requirements for that. So we want to have it NMOS capable. So we want to set up standards and receiver via simple uh, SDP descriptions. We want uh, to handle the callback 
active NMOS activation callback as automatically. They should activate and configure the right um, senders and receivers in our pipeline. And we will also want to stay low code to be able to set up our NMOS nodes directly from the command line and configure it. So um, to enable this, we created a, a new GStreamer plugin that is basically models an NMOS node. Um, as with any other GStreamer element, you can specify it in your command line. And how it works is, the, from the GStreamer perspective, you can select how many syncs you want to have in your pipeline. Each sync uh, will configure an, an NMOS sender. And likewise, for the sources, each source that you request will um, configure an uh, NMOS receiver in your NMOS node. And this plugin will handle like the activation callback and configure all the UDP syncs and sources accordingly when there are NMOS activation callbacks. So how can you use this oops, from the command line? Uh, we'll first do like a NMOS sender. And for to do that, we will just replace our UDP sync which we had to configure manually to a certain IP address. We will now use our NMOS bin plugin, and we just let the flow of the sickness flow into this um, NMOS bin. It will, when once it's enabled via NMOS, will spin up our NMOS node. When NMOS enables the sender, it will start to send our SIMP2110 buffers um, based on the SDP description that you um, provided. So now we have a sender. Can we also do a receiver? Um, for the receiver, we can also launch it from a command line. But um, instead of putting our NMOS node in the beginning of the pipeline, um, oops, I will, um, in the end of the pipeline, we will now put it in the beginning of our pipeline. So what we're going to be doing now is um, we will put in the beginning of a pipeline, request a source from this NMOS node, which will, um, once it's enabled by NMOS, receive 2110 via our SNCC, and the data will be packetized, directly transferred to our GPU, because we want to do some GPU processing. In our core case, we will encode using um, H.264. And we can then, for example, use SRT, the SRT plugin of GStreamer to send out this um, media stream to, let's say, YouTube or like any other SRT distribution that you want to use. So we have seen senders and receivers that you can configure from command line. Let's see whether we can also have senders and receivers at the same time to do some processing. Um, in this case, we are using a pipeline where we use both the source and the sync of our NMOS node. And once enabled by NMOS, we will receive SIMD2110. Data will be transferred via GPU direct, directly to the GPU. We will then send our pipeline to NV Video Convert, which is a convenient scaler, cropper, rotator, video converter on the GPU. For this pipeline, we will just specify rotate 180 degrees, which will, on the GPU, flip our video. We'll then send it back to NMOS bin and function as an NMOS sender to send out SIMD2110 um, yeah, as a, your outgoing connection. Um, as I said, you can all do this from command line, but also use the plugin in your application. And once you executed this uh, three command lines, you will see in your favorite uh, NMOS controller UI, pop up the nodes, and you can configure them, set up a flow, and we have a nice little NMOS, NMOS uh, network. So, as I said, this is based on GStreamer. So this plugin can run wherever G uh, DeepStream can run on. So it can run on, a, on the edge, on a Jetson, can run on a workstation, or it can also run on, on in cloud, in a Kubernetes cluster. Um, it's all up to you. Also, it's multi-arch. You can run it on x86 or on 
ARM processors. Also, we wanted, uh, we will open source this library, so you don't have to use GStreamer. We will serve it as an application, so you can experiment with it, with the technology, um, but you can always decide whether you want to uh, use DeepStream for certain elements, or whether you want to use our RiverMax or, or Video Quality SDK directly, if you need more control over your application. And yeah, what's next? We did a pretty boring thing, just rotate the video, but um, what we wanted to show is that you, it's quite easy to get started with that. And once you have like a simple GPU function to do processing, can of course get step by step more complicated. You can do more complex transcoding workflows. You can run AI. Um, it's all up to you. And what we want to invite you that you really tell us what you would like to use this for. And to do that, it's probably best to visit our booth at the IBC Texel in Hall 8 or at uh, the Dell booth in Hall 7 and yeah, can just approach it, watch the demo that we set up and yeah, give us some feedback. Have we time for questions?